Hello and welcome, my name is Meeplus, they, she, he, and this is Literally Graphic. And today we are looking at the middle grade comic Twins by Varian Johnson and Shannon Wright. This standalone book was published by Scholastic's Graphics Imprint in 2020. Content notes for turbulent family relationships, bullying, military program in school, and throwing up due to anxiety. According to his website, Quote, Varian Johnson is the author of several novels for children and young adults, including The Parker Inheritance, which won both Coretta Scott King Author Honor and Boston Globe slash Horn Book Honor Awards. The Great Green Heist, an ALA notable children's book and Kirkus Review best book. Varian was born in Florence, South Carolina, and attended the University of Oklahoma, where he received a BS in civil engineering. He later received an MFA in writing for children and young adults from Vermont College of Fine Arts, and is honored to now be a member of the faculty. Varian lives outside of Oxton, Texas, with his family. End quote. And based out of Richmond, Virginia, Shannon Wright has done work for publications like The Guardian, Time Magazine, NY Times, Mother Jones, NPR, and Google. Twins is her debut graphic novel. Pausing for a moment, this is part of my Black Comics Creator TBR, so as per tradition, I will now highlight a Black YouTuber. This time, since I don't really watch that many people who come to mind as generally talking about middle grade literature especially that I haven't already highlighted. I decided to go with Melina Pendulum. Obviously someone with a lot more subscribers than me, but not enough. One of my favorite video essayists, she asks a lot of very interesting questions about pop culture from a fandom informed and feminist perspective. Circling back to twins, what kinds of keywords come to mind reading this standalone book? Sisters, self-confidence, friendships, school politics, discipline, coming of age, and individuality. The summary on Goodreads is, quote, Maureen and Francine Carter are twins and best friends. They participate in the same clubs, enjoy the same foods, and are partners on all their school projects. But just before the girls start sixth grade, Francine becomes Fran, a girl who wants to join the chorus, run for class president, and dress in fashionable outfits that set her apart from Maureen, a girl who seems happy to share only two classes with her sister. Maureen and Francine are growing apart, and there's nothing Maureen can do to stop it. Are sisters really forever, or will middle school change things for good? End quote. A pretty wholesome, if at times emotionally fraught, read. Everything very good and excellent about this book's writing, themes, and art was balanced out by how annoying the military representation in this book was. I mean, I attended several grade schools in America. I was pretty sure that the extremely dodgy military cadet programs didn't start until high school. But no, in this book at least, they start in middle school. This isn't cute. This isn't harmless. This isn't good for kids. TLDR, these programs are normalizing imperialism, authoritarianism, ableism, and violence for children. Not to mention that the so-called American military is a lead contributor to climate change and therefore actively destroying the future that Maureen and Fran are trying to grow into, among many other toxic things. Geez, the way her parents and then her, the teacher emotionally manipulate Maureen is also not great. The ends do not justify the means. As far as gender and race goes, I am glad to see Scholastic pursuing more diverse creators and stories, even if I disagree with their politics much like I often disagree with the politics of their less diverse creators. An anarchist zine press, it is not. That said, the fact that the military cadet's leader is a black woman reminded me of that so-called woke CIA recruitment ad that was trending a while ago. Neoliberalism will literally co-op anything and everything, but minus that. Blackness is a strong theme throughout the story, and we see lots of diversity among a pretty wide selection of non-white characters. Unlike in A Girl Called Echo, twins did not include even low-key queer sexuality and gender representation. However, there are some heterosexual crushes that pop up on top of seemingly heterosexual parents. Not surprised, but meh. Similarly, assuming I didn't forget anything, everyone is assumed to be pretty able-bodied. The one exception was obviously Maureen struggling with some serious phobias and anxieties, which does demonstrate less than perfect ability, but that was really balanced out by how many times people were told to do push-ups. Eh, at least in my noob opinion. And to conclude, class wasn't really brought up. Overall, I would say that this was a 3 out of 5 star read. Maybe I would go even lower if I was truly being principled, 
but I don't want to feel petty either. Mine is a minority opinion. You'll probably enjoy this book more than I did. Bye y'all, keep reading and organized and capitalist depression. And as always, Literally Graphic is created on land that should be given back to the traditional land holders, which in this case is, to my knowledge, the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation, Anishinaabe people, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, and the Huron-Wendat Nation.